Alan Williams of New Harbor, Newfoundland, has been trying to get action for the cleanup of toxic contamination at the Upper Trinity Waste Disposal Site for almost a decade. Several alarming incidences alerted him that the site is not an innocuous domestic dump, but is in fact a toxic waste site. This includes the dark legacy of PCBs lurking there. A large amount of PCB contaminated waste that was offloaded on this site in here by our own Department of Environment back in 1985. Uh, they brought it here in the middle of the night, which, well, that would arouse anyone's suspicions. Uh, they denied that it ever went here on many occasions. Alan first became interested in 2001 when he made some startling and disturbing discoveries. Ghosts staggering around the dump and trying to crawl out of the pits and throwing up a, a yellow liquid. We went downstream after that. Well, anyone knows what a, a septic tank is like that needs cleaning out. This is what you had. When he found these deformed stickleback downstream from the dump, he became even more concerned, even though the government reported this was due to a natural event. As he continued to investigate, he found information about at least two events of transformers being dumped at the site. One report of a cleanup of a salvage yard in Mackinson's Newfoundland indicated that 186 transformers had been moved to New Harbor. The report also said that efforts to clean the transformers was ineffective. Pressure from citizens resulted in a study being conducted in 2002 which found during a very preliminary investigation that PCBs were not leaching from the site. However, the report also said that due to the impact on the waterways from sediment and heavy metal levels in particular, the dump was likely in violation of the Fisheries Act. The report did show detectable levels of PCBs on the site, suspicious if the transformers had been cleaned. You can imagine. When they were doing the test, large numbers of transformers were unearthed in a very small area, supporting the claims that there had been huge numbers of transformers buried there in the 1980s. Did this trigger a cleanup? Nope. So Alan continued to push for more investigations. In 2007, yet another study was commissioned. Test pits were dug on and around the site. Some of the test pits indicated PCBs in the soils are well above allowable levels. The other study by the same company, AMEC, is a classic example of the baffling bumble. A fish study, it was supposed to test the effects of the dump contrasting a control, a location typical of the surroundings and that should not be affected by the dump, with a treatment location. The test found that the treatment was cleaner than the control. Alan knew that had to be wrong. We got a new map here now with the more updated uh, locations where the fish were. And now the arrows weren't pointing to the steady anymore. Now they had their thumbtacks up where the arrows do, pointing to Creek Corner Pond. But they also gave us the coordinates. As soon as I saw the coordinates, I knew what happened. They had sampled in another location which was clean, not downstream of the dump at all. No wonder the report didn't find any contamination. In 2009, transformers are still visible above ground at the dump. Despite multiple recommendations that the dump be closed, it is still a very active working dump. Friends of the Earth Canada is working with Alan Williams to use the new PCB regulations under the Canadian Environmental Protection Act to kickstart an investigation of wrongdoing. Do you think you have a site in violation of the PCB regulations near you? Are your environmental rights being trampled? Friends of the Earth wants to know.